Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our webinar on Fibonacci's. And let's get started. Now, this is the first time we're doing this class, although I've been using Fibonacci's for a century here. But, you know, it, sometimes the first class isn't so perfect, but I'll try to make it the best I can for you. But we'll be offering this class every two months. So you can come back and join us in two months. And you can also access the recorded version that we're going to record tonight if you'd like to see it again by using the same link you used to come to tonight's class. Now, because ETX is a regulated provider, I'm required to read you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk and seek independent advice if necessary. ETS Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation or construed as advice. All traders must understand that there is a high element of randomness to the markets. Therefore, they will experience both winning and losing trades while following a trading strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. And for those of you that don't know much about ETX, we're a fast growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, that's the Financial Conduct Authority. And we're also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you can trade on our ETX Pro platform or download our ETX MT4 platform. And up until recently, we offered ETX Binary, which I believe at the end of this month will no longer be available. And that's all right because we've added in ETX cryptocurrency. And right now you can trade Bitcoin on our platform and we're going to be offering five other currencies in the next few weeks or five new cryptocurrencies. We also have recently launched our new all new ETX Trader Pro platform. And if you haven't had a chance to use it, all you do is go on your platform and click on the top, see where the green button says, exit to new platform. Okay, you can click, there'll be a button to open a new platform. And if you don't like it or it's confusing to you, 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 know, you wanna trade with our old platform, just click on the green button and you can go back. And if you wanna learn more about the platform, on a weekly basis, we offer a class on mastering or learning how to use the new ETX Trader Pro platform and our advanced charts. Now, as I said earlier, tonight's class is being recorded. And to see a copy of this recorded version uh, in about 24 hours, just use the same link used to come to tonight's class, and you'll be able to see the recorded copy of this class. So let's get started talking about FIBs. Now, Fibonacci retracements are ratios used to identify potential reversal levels. These ratios are found in the Fibonacci sequence. The most popular Fibonacci retracements are the 61.8%, the 38.2% of what we call the retracement. So the strategy, not the strategy, but the understanding is that markets will retrace, especially Forex, will retrace a certain amount of its previous move. So in other words, if an asset had trended up and say gold moved from 1200 to 1300 and then turned downward, it would most likely retrace downward to 61.8% of its prior, of the prior move up or to 38.2% of the prior move up, or one of the other numbers added into the Fibonacci sequence is 50%. Now, 50% is not part of the Fibonacci sequence, but it is so popular and you hit so many times when an asset is retracing, it has been incorporated into the Fibonacci retracement levels. So the three most common price retracement levels we look for, 61.8, 50, and then 38, 2. Now, these retracements can be combined with other indicators and price patterns to create an overall strategy. 
So the Fibonacci ratio are to define a retracement level and forecast the extent of a correction or a pullback. Fibonacci retracements can also be applied after a decline to forecast the length of the counter trend bounce. Okay. Now that's a lot of words, but using fibs are fairly easy, especially if you understand support and resistance, because what the fibs do is give you another level of support and resistance or an area where you would expect the price to bounce or have a trouble tr going through. Now, the amazing part about these Fibonacci numbers is nobody knows exactly why we have them aware in the universe again, because they, they, they weren't developed for the Forex market. They've been around since about the 12th century. Okay. Now, they are based on a sequence of numbers and this sequence starts out with a zero, and then the zero is added to a one, which is the next number. And then after that, the, so the next Fibonacci number is the zero plus the one, which gives us one. But then when you add the two previous numbers together, the one plus the one, it gives you two. Then when you add the one plus the two, it gives you three. You add the two to the three, and it gives you five. So you're always adding the current number and the previous number, and that gives you your next Fibonacci number or the next fib in this sequence. Now, this sequence can be used in mathematics or is, is actually been put into mathematical equations and it gives us certain ratios. Okay. So after the one, which we talked about, we add each number to the sum to the prior numbers and a number divided by the previous number gives us our FIB ratios. So in other words, if you were to take the prior number and divide it by the current number, you would then get the Fibonacci ratio. So in other words, 1618 is equal to 21 divided by 13, okay, which would have been 8 plus 13. So the sequence was 8. 13 added together, and that gave you 21. The next sequence after that would have been what? 13 plus 21 gives you 13 gives you 34. And then if you take that 34 and divide it by the 21, you get 161.9. The next number in that sequence would have been the 34 added to the 21, which gives you 55. You take that 55 and divide it by the previous sequence, and it gives you 34. You divide it, and you get 161.7876. And so no matter what you do, and no matter how many times you do this, throughout the whole sequence, you get the, the number or the division number is approximately 161.8. But that's a lot of decimals over. So we just put it at 161.8, and a lot of people round it out to 161.2. A number divided by the next highest number, okay, which is the exact opposite of what you do above. So we take the 13 and divide it by the 21, gives you 61.8. So 161.8 is, is a, fib not, a fib number. That's a higher number above the increase, but it is used as part of the Fibonacci sequence. But for Forex and CFDs and cryptos, the three important numbers, like I said, are 61.8, is because it's got to retrace down the opposite direction. So 61.8, then 38.2, which is the next set of numbers down here. And then you can go down to 23.6. But what we use in you know, the common numbers are 61.8, 50, and 38.2. Okay. Now these sequences can be found all throughout the universe, they were not conjured up for the Forex market. 618, 161.8 refers to the golden ratio or the golden mean, or sometimes called V. The inverse of the 161.8 is 0.618. These ratios can be found throughout nature and architect, art, everywhere. If you measure and use these numbers on the waves in a shell, 
or the placement of your eyes and your nose and your mouth. You'll find that these exist. The proportion of the 61.8 to 1 is the mathematical basis for the shape of a playing card, for the Parthenon, sunflowers, snail shells in the, in the circle, Greek vases, and the spirals in the galaxies in outer space. The Greeks based much of their art and architecture on this proportion, and they called it the golden mean. Now, as you know, when the Greeks were in their A-day, that was way before we had Forex and CFD trading, and these numbers were being used way back then. Now, when we try to apply them into the financial markets, we would find that an asset will retrace itself to this 38.2. So in other words, the price pushed up and then it retraced 38.2% of the prior move. If it falls below that, it will most likely retrace down to the 50 level. And if it goes through the 50 level, it'll most likely go to the 61.8 level. Now you say this could be a hot bunch of hogwash. But you know, you're using three general numbers saying it goes to it. But when you put these exact, and when you put the Fibonacci numbers on your chart, you're using exact numbers and you're using this exact tool. And you'll find that when these prices retrace, they hit and stop at those numbers. It's it's very, very strange. Some people say it's a self-fulfilling fantasy because so many people are using these FIB numbers that the market is reacting to these numbers because so many people are using them, or self-fulfilling fantasy. But it's not true. It's been happening since before we had computerized trading. So assets will often pull back or retrace a percentage of the previous move before reversing. These Fibonacci retracements often occur at the three levels of 38.2, 50, and 61.8. And as I said earlier, actually, the 50% level really does not have anything to do with Fibonacci. But traders use this level because of the tendency of stocks to reverse after retracing half of the previous move. Now, these numbers come up too often and prices react to these numbers too often to be flukes. So the pictures we showed showed a graphical representation of the reversal points for stocks in an uptrend or any you know, any financial assets. The pattern is reversed and when this when the assets turn downtrend. So after a stock makes a move to the upside, it can retrace a part of that move and then move will continue back in the direction it was going. And that's what we saw on these previous charts. Asset pushed up, fell down to the 38.2 level, and then re continued its move. Because if you remember, and you and you remember our classes and trends, trends, a proper developed trend, and an asset that is trending moves and pushes and eases, pushes and eases, pushes and eases, because the market doesn't move straight in that direction. It moves in peaks and valleys or waves. Okay. These waves can be defined. Now, when you see an asset pushing up, you need it to, to ease. You need the markets to take a breather. You need the buyers to recoup. And you need to find a new, they need to find a new position. So what happens is prices move up. By buying, 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 buying. We'll see volume increasing and increase at some point. The buyers are either exhausted, so all the buyers are bought out, or the other potential buyers saying, oh, with that, that price is pushed up too high, too high for me to enter the market. Not that it's going to stop moving, too high for me to enter the market. So they'll wait for the market to ease back down. Now, when it eases to the 38.2 level, you might see new fresh buying because the buyers say, okay, that's a good price to get in the market. If it, do if it doesn't push back up, it's because the buyers aren't ready to move back in the market. The price isn't low enough to make them want to come back. So you've got to tease them farther. So the next level that they might, would be looking at is that 50% retracement. 
And again, it's got to be an attractive number to get the buyers back in the market. Okay. If it falls to 61.8, okay, the farther down it goes, the less the more attractive it looks, but the less likelihood that it is going to simply attract the buyers. Because what's happening now is when it breaks to 50 and starts moving down to 61.8, you get a lot of panic. You get people that are being stopped out of the market. You get people saying, uh-oh, it's a retracement. Uh, it's a reversal, not a retracement. Or it's gone to a downtrend off the uptrend, and they get out of the markets. So you have a lot of newbies who are selling out of the market running. You have stop losses that have been hit because it's gone too far for you know a trader to to want to stay in the market, and they set a stop loss or you know the day before, or hours before when they entered the market because this is the only point that they wanted to allow that asset to fall. So then the market gets to that level, and then fresh new buyers come in because they say, "Oh, that's a pretty good price. I'm going to buy." And guess what? They help move that price back up into its original trend. May not be as strong, but they're just looking for that price to continue moving upward. So the question is, how do you properly draw and put a fib on your chart? Now, it used to be quite difficult because you had to do this by hand, do the calculation. Today, it's really easy. What you do is you find on your tool, on your chart, whether you're using the charts on ETX or you're using your own charts, you find where the tool is offered on your chart. And then you have to find what I call the strategic high and the strategic low of the prior move, not the current move, but of the prior move. Because if we're going to retrace that prior move, the computer needs to know what that move was in order to put those fibs on your chart. So we have to then retrace. So here we had an uptrend, as you can see. Then we went into a downtrend. And then we moved into another uptrend. Now, you could have drawn Fibonacci's based on a long, because you have to use the charts that are based on the time frame in which you want to trade. So if you're using a 15-minute chart, a one-hour, two-hour chart, and you would draw these numbers on your chart. And the Fib and just simply by pulling your Fibonacci tool from your low to your high, it's the system is calculating the, the prior move, and then we'll drop this on and put the, the 100%, the 61.8, the 50, and the 38.2, and you can have as many levels as you want them, Fibs. Okay, you can have each one of those numbers in a ratio, and it, it because those numbers, as you get the small numbers between, 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 they're not critically important. So the ones we're concerned with are these three right here. 38, 2, 50, and 61, 8. And as we can see on this chart, we're going to go over some live charts in a second. Don't worry, we're going to go over and do this. That this asset is currently trading at 33. Okay. We could see that the prior retracement at 38, 2 was at 29, 61. Then to drop into 50% gain was 28.93. And so these are the actual price levels at the, the exact percentage of the prior move. So if we were to take that move up, we would expect that retracement at this level, this level, and this level. Now, remember, you only can use the previous trend. You can't go back and use a trend that was over a week ago. So it's what will it retrace of the previous trend, the previous move, and what was the critical high of that previous move, and what was the swing low and the swing high of those moves. But now I classify it as what I call the critical, like I said, because sometimes in the marketplace, you know, you get these odd surges, especially on a candle. When you have a wick that shot way, way, way down for one second, but it still was that low for that trading period, 
but it wasn't a strategic low for your charts. So let's go step by step, and then we're going to go put this on a live chart together. So in order to find these Fibonacci retracement levels, you have to find the recent significant swing high and swing low. Then for downtrends, click on the swing high and drag the cursor to the most recent swing low. For uptrends, do the opposite. Click on the swing low and drag the cursor to the most recent swing high. So I've got a chart set up for us here. So let's go look at this euro chart. So what we're looking at is this is just a euro US dollar and a 30 minute chart. So we can see the asset has been trading down, but it's still in that downtrend. So we need to use the previous uptrend to see where it will retrace to. Do we want to classify this as a significant swing low? And this would be the significant swing high. So you can see this is where the uptrend started and this is where the uptrend ended. So what do we do on an uptrend? Remember what it said on my little chart before? Okay. On an uptrend, hold on a second. On an uptrend, we click on the swing low and drag the cursor to the most recent swing high. Got it? Okay. So let's go back to the Euro US dollar. So we're gonna come over here to the left and we're gonna look for where we have our Fibonacci tools. And we're gonna go here to our simple Fib retracement. And we're gonna to come to the swing low once we turned it on and drag it to the swing high. Oops, come on button. There we go. And we've put our Fibonacci levels on there. So now we can see on the downtrend, we already have these numbers dropped on here. So the 61.8 retracement level was right here, 123.84. The 50 level was at 124.176. The 38.2 was at 124.05. Now let's take a look at how this downtrend has moved. Did we get any reaction? Well, at the 38.2, look at all the congestion we got there. But then the price eventually fell right down to the 50 level. And we had a lot of reaction to that 50 level, but it wasn't able to hold it. And at that point, we might have said, uh-oh, this is really moving into a downtrend. It's not going to retrace. And that's exactly what happened. It moved into a downtrend. So it didn't retrace the uptrend because it continued breaking through. And this is the point when it broke that 50 level, okay, and we saw all that congestion here at the 50 level that I might have wanted to get out of the market. But look, if you let it go down to the 61.8, you saw it bounce back up. And where did it bounce back up to right here? Right to the 50% level or support your prior support and resistance levels came back down and held right at that 61.8 level could not come off of it to, to retrace and broke through and then we had an honest to god downtrend but we can see all of the reaction that we had in the markets to these fib levels as that price was coming down now we're almost came down to 100 percent because in the Forex market, assets have a way, if you under, if you watch trends and learn trends, assets have a way of moving in an uptrend and then going all the way down to the price it was before. They almost re, will not retrace, but because it's not a retracement, is price moves up and then it moves down. And it usually goes up and then reverses down. Not a retracement. That's not how the trends go. It's just how in long term you see the prices go up and down. Because otherwise, if they continued going up and then down a little bit, and continue, we'd have continuously new prices being created upward. If they continued going down and always went down a little bit farther, than you'd have always that much lower prices. But as you know, things like the euro, US dollar, it's got a top and a bottom, but it stays in a pretty well range. So 
it might surge up to 135 in its current marketplace, you know, in its current year. And but it'll come back down to the 123 level, and go back up to 135 and back over, say, the balance of 2018. I don't know what the range is, but it tends to retrace or recover all of its previous losses or its gains. But if you notice on here, the Fibonacci levels held not to guarantee that the, because there's no guarantee the asset's going to bounce off of it. It's where we're looking for a reaction. Okay, And this Fib levels that we put on here gave you a whole story. It alerted you to exactly what was going on in the market. It also gave you a lot of trading opportunities. Because you had trading opportunities when it broke the 38.2 straight down to the 61.8 level or right down to 50. Every time it hit that 50 level, wasn't able to sustain it. It made a nice downtrend back up to that 50 level, back down to the 61.8. And then it broke the 61.8 and you had a clear downward alert that that asset is going to fall. So it offered you a lot of opportunities. And this was not a made up case. This is the current Euro US dollar in today's market. Now I'm not suggesting any type of trade. And that's why we're not even going all the way up to the, where it is because we're not suggesting any type. I'm saying to you, if you had put these fibs on your chart correctly when the uptrend ended, Okay, because you notice we didn't use this. We only use this point here and this point here. And this gave us e everything forward. So we had lots of clues to price movement. We had lots of opportunities. Now, say, for instance, as the price was coming down, where would you want to enter the market? Maybe you said if it didn't hold at a 23.6 level, I get a trade and I look at that 38.2. That if it bounced off, I'd exit the market. If it broke through it, I would continue in that down market. Okay. There are lots of ways that you can incorporate this into your trading decisions. But what it's doing is giving you lots of alerts to move along with it. And of course, one single indicator or one single tool isn't enough to make a trading decision. But it's sure enough to hit you on the back of the head and say, hey, look at me. You're missing opportunities. Hey, look at me. Maybe you should be moving your stop loss off. Hey, look at me. Maybe you should be exiting this market. It's giving you all the alerts and all the information you could possibly need. Now, again, you have to incorporate in a trading system. But the nice thing about it is if you think of this as support and resistance level, you could combine this very easily with pivot points. Okay, If you add it on volume, and let's drop volume on the chart real quickly. Let's see if we can get it. Sometimes the volume button doesn't work correctly on TradingView charts. But let's see if we can get it on here with no problem today. Yeah, put it on there. Okay. Now, we just dropped volume on the chart. We would want to look at this at each as it broke the price zones to see what the traders were doing. Was volume increasing or decreasing? So as we can see, we've had a steady flow in volume. And look at how volume down below worked so well with the price movement. Okay. As we saw this trend being broken and price falling continuously, look at the surge in volume. That means traders were selling down. Okay. Look at how low volume was when it hit the 50% level. They were not looking. There was nobody coming in the market. They were all sitting back saying, will this bounce above or break below? So they're sitting on the sidelines. But again, you can't use any single decision-making. A strategy includes many ways or many keys that you, you know, put together. Okay, Because again, you don't even know until you actually do some risk management, money management, will does it offer an opportunity that's worthwhile presenting itself? You know, how what is the difference between the how, how many pips can I make between the sixty one eight and the, the the zero? You know, the fifty percent. You know, maybe it's it, maybe you got the alert, but maybe there's not enough pips to cover the spread and stay in the market. You know, in this case, it was from one twenty three eight four 
to 124.1. That's a good one because remember those levels come depending on how far that previous trend was. But the fibs work and are very, very reliable. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. Let's talk a little bit more about how you might incorporate these and what you might use together with these fib levels. Now, the critical part is first is finding the swing high and the swing low of the prior move. Okay. Because if you don't find the right swing high and the swing low, then your fibs were not going to be dropped on the chart properly. So in order to apply Fibonacci levels to your charts, you need to identify the swing high and swing low points. Now, you can define them as a swing high as a candlestick with at least two lower highs on both the left and the right of itself. A swing low is a candle that has at least two higher lows on both sides of the left and the right of itself. Okay. You have to define what you're going to use as your significant high and low. When using Fibonacci tools, the probability of Forex trading su success could increase when used with other support and resistance levels, trend lines, and candlestick patterns for spotting entry and stop loss points. So remember, they act as alert zones. And you can combine these together to actually with, say, your support and resistance pivot points or standard eyeballing support and create the zone between what you found on one and the actual FIB levels. Retracement levels alert traders or investors of a potential trend reversal. Resistance areas are support areas. Retracements are based on the prior move. A bounce is expected to retrace a portion of the prior decline or the prior rise, while a correction is expected to retrace a portion of the prior advance. Once a pullback starts, charters can identify specific Fibonacci retracement levels for monitoring. As the correction approaches these levels, charters should become alert for a potential bullish reversal. So this chart shows, well, this is the S&P here and shows you here's Home Depot. So look, this is, this is a long chart because it's a stock investment and a long-term investment, but we isolated the, the swing low and the swing high, put our FIB levels on there, drew the lines forward, and we could find beautiful retracement zones. Okay. What you do with them is a different story. And you know, when we talk about the up, we also have to inverse it, in, invert it because it's the exact upside down for the downtrend. And it's, the only difference is, is you pull your Fibonacci levels on the opposite direction. So instead of pulling from the swing low to the swing high, you pull from the swing high to the swing low. Now, keep in mind that these retracement levels are not hard reversal points. Instead, they serve as alert zones for a potential reversal. It is at this point that traders should employ other aspects of technical analysis to identify or confirm a reversal. These may include candlestick, pr candlesticks, price patterns, momentum oscillators, and my favorite is either a crossover moving average strategy or using MACD. Because MACD also gives you three pieces of information. MACD will give you a buy, a sell, or a transactional signal. They'll tell you if an asset's overbought or oversold. And they will also give you um, divergence. And so they are very good tools, but you have to build them into your trading strategy based on the ones that you're comfortable with and that you like to trade with. Now, remember your FIB levels, in a, in, when you're putting the, your FIB levels on a chart, if you look at the previous trend, the more well-developed that previous trend is, the more accurate, not that you can do anything about it. There's nothing you can do. About it. Sometimes you have weak trends. Sometimes you have erratic trends. Sometimes you have trends that were you know, very, very long and, and long last. Sometimes you have very short trends. When you saw like on the euro US dollar, we had this beautiful previous trend. And therefore it gave us a much more reliable uh, information on the current trend. But you have moderate retracements, hard retracements. Okay. 
And if you've been paying attention to class, you know by now that you can combine the Fibonacci retracement tool with support and resistance levels and trend lines to create a simple but super awesome trading strategy. When combining the Fibonacci retracement tools with candlestick patterns, we are actually looking for exhaustive candles. I can tell you when buying and selling pressure is exhausted. It can give you a clue of when price may continue trending. Because you know, when you can find prices that should be significant or levels that should be significant price action points, you're then one step ahead because you're saying, okay, I'm expecting something to happen at this price. And when you see it either happen or it doesn't happen, then you can respond to the markets. Okay. So fibs work extremely well, as I'm flashing up on the screen, with candlestick patterns. And together with support and resistance fibs and candlesticks, you can have, an, again, a very, very good trading system. So here we can see exactly here as price fell down to the 100% level of, or the zero level of the FIB retrace. Look at the exhaustion of the buyers. The candlesticks were all the same. We have all of these indecisive candles and then we have the new ones. Here we see the candlesticks retracing to the bottom points uh, right here on the 50% FIB level and then bouncing off of them. So there are many ways to incorporate these, but using them is critically important because they give you a leg up. They help you understand what is going on the market. They will also can be used to set your stop losses. Because your first method is set your stop loss just past the next Fibonacci level. So if you're expecting the markets to go up and they bounce off the 61.8 level, set your, your stop loss you know, in the opposite side of the using the next Fibonacci level. So if you're planning to enter at the 38.2 FIB level, then you would place your stop beyond the, at the 50% level. If you felt like the 50% level would hold, then you would put your stop at the 61.8 or right past it. Okay. You can also use this with OCO orders okay, or limit orders because you can say, you know, set up an order ahead of time that if price hits, you know, comes down to 50 50% level and breaks through, exercise a sell order. If it bounces off of it, exercise a buy order. And you can have all that set up so the system automatically reacts to this. Now, if you want to be a little safer, another way to set, to set your stops would be to place them at past the recent swing low or swing high. This type of stop loss placement would give your trade more room to breathe and give you a better chance for your market to move in your favor of, of your trade. The truth is, just like in combining the Fibonacci retracement tool with support and resistance levels, trend lines, and candlesticks to find a better entry, it would be best to use your knowledge of these tools to analyze the current environment to help you pick a good stop loss point. As much as possible, you shouldn't rely solely on Fibonacci levels as support or resistance levels as your basis for a stop loss. Remember, you should always be incorporating risk management and money management. Just because you can place a stop loss doesn't mean it's a good trade. Remember, a stop loss placement isn't a sure thing. So in conclusion, Fibonacci retracements are often used to identify the end of a correction or the counter trend bounce. Corrections and counter trend bounces often retrace a portion of the prior move. While a short 23.6 retracement do occur, the 38.2 and the 61.8 with the 50 in the middle cover most of the probabilities. This zone may seem big, but it's just a reversal alert zone. Other technical signals are needed to confirm a reversal. Reversals can be confirmed with candlesticks, momentum indicators, volume, or chart patterns. In fact, the more confirming factors, the more robust the signal. So that's it for tonight for Fibonacci levels. What I would advise you to do is use the charts on ETX, draw your Fib chart, and just practice drawing them on there, and then watch how the markets react to it. If you're using a strategy now, just add it into your current strategy, and then see how accurately they help you predict, and then just use them part of your everyday strategy. And once you're used to them, you'll see how good and reliable they are, and you'll feel comfortable relying on them. 
So have a good night. Thank you for supporting ETX, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.